die in this fly here. It's a, they call a stone clinger, which is a, a nymph we see a lot in many rivers. It's a river fly that's apparently been asked to tie. I, I rarely tie them. I've had, it's actually drove me crazy to be honest with you. So I've got one here, which is a wee bit bulky in the head, though it looks okay. It's got orange eyes, and this one, slightly lighter, it's got the yellow eyes. So this is the one I prefer. Out of all the, the ones I've been tying, that's the best one. So the hook I'm just using a heavy sort of wet fly hook, it's a barbless hook. Uh, got to weight it, but first I'm going to put a layer of thread down. The thread I'm going to use is the uni thread in Lake Cahill. Just going to put down a layer of thread just to make sure the lead's not going to roll. I'm going to wind it onto, actually onto this thread turns so that it doesn't twist or because I'm going to flatten it slightly. Now the lead I'm using is just a lead foil, a sticky back lead foil. Uh, start it at the back here, wind up, just short to the eye and then remove it. Just break it off, really easy to do that. And then to encourage the shape, just lay it flat on the top. Now Round about, just short, a turn less, and then you can break this off with your nail. Just come in, break it away. Just make sure it's sitting on top. Then I'm going to come set about, say, two thirds of the way up. And again, just break your nail. Break it using your nail. Get it to set at this point, just, it's okay. And that's enough. Then I'm going to come back up with the thread, quite light at first, just to make sure it's going to hold the lead in place. Straight to the eye. Then come back down. I've got a pair of tweezers here, so I use. Now what I'm going to do is flatten it, just going to flatten it down, pressing. It's tips as well. Use a pair of pliers if you've got them, but I use these. Just to give the nymph the more, the flat profile that it's got. And see, there it's there. Don't press it too hard or you'll burst the lead, so... But to encourage this to stay together, I'm going to use some super glue. Bring my thread back up again, just nice and... Reasonably tight. Just cover the lead up. And this will help stick it all down. Now I'm going to tie in the thorax covers, the cover in the eyes at this point. Thorax cover, just a bit of raffia. This is dyed raffia. It's in a kind of yellow olive. It's quite a nice colour. Just going to tie this on the top. It's a pinch it. So it's flat like this. And then tie it on top. So I trim this slightly at an angle so I get a nice taper. I want this as flat as you can. Uh, just you can see what it's looking like now. See that's flat. And again we can just quickly tidy this up. Now the eyes, I'm using 12 pound this, this yellow type coloured nylon. I did use the, the, the orange one, which was slightly heavier. It looks okay, it's certainly worth using, but I certainly I preferred the, the yellow. They've cut down about, say, a centimetre and a half. Now, the width of the eyes, obviously, in this nymph is quite wide. So you look at the distance, the, where you want it to be, the eyes. And I'm using, obviously, it's a tapered tip here and get the distance between the eyes the way I want, or the distance I want anyway. Then I'm going to melt them to that point. Just let it go in. Same on the other side. Blow lightly. Just allow it to cool down. There we are. And then I'm going to figure out them on. Round about a millimetre from the, the raffia. So you've got a wee space there to form a, 
start the head off. Make sure they're the same distance. There we go. Look all right. Yep. And we can just keep figure eighting. It's nice and tight. Now, once we've figure eight through our, our eyes, we start the head down to tie in our tail. Now, for the tail, I'm going to be using dyed dyed olive badger. These the guard hairs. These ones here. Now, what I do is to stick a few off, cut them away from the skin, and then I'm going to put them into a stacker. Tips first. Tap on your desk, just to line up the ends, you can see there, just remove them, you can see there's quite a few there, all, but I picked the best from the bunch as they say, looking for three nice tail fibres, you can see there's one, two, three there, try and, try and keep them together if you can, just take it away. Keep the these, put them back in the stacker for your next fly. And here, and there we go. Tail length. Now, I've seen the tails in these nymphs quite long, longer than uh, normal. So you're looking at least the length of the, the hook. So what I'm going to do is catch one at the back, on top, come underneath with a turn. Just lift the fibres up, see how they're sitting, see the length, see the length there, and it's okay. Then I'm going to figure eight through, come under, come this side of this fibre, which needs to me, ignore the centre one, lock that turn in, and then do a thread turn to force them apart, and then do a turn to lock it down. And that's basically figure through the fibres but ignoring the centre one. Trim this other half the length of the body. And I'm going to take my thread up tying this down. I want that nice taper in the body to this point. Just there. Now we're going to be using our organza ribbon for our, our gills. And uh, this one I'm using this here is the, the actual one. It tells you what it is. So a Ganser ribbon, it's a 10mm one with a woven edge and this is a gold, which is a this kind of yellow. And this one's made, or it's called Sheer Class. Uh, there we are. Now what I do is get a long pair of scissors and basically cut along around about maybe 2mm from the edge. Just using, follow the tips of the scissors, don't Follow the cutting edge, it's the tips that you follow. Obviously you get cut the other edge for the size of fly at a time. And all that, then what we do is we remove the running fibre, the fibre that runs along the, the ribbon. You can I usually do it on the vise. But uh, just to show you, just grab these fibres and draw them away. When it gets closer to the the seam, I'll use my, my dubbing needle just to ease them out. Don't grab too many at a time because they'll just stick. You keep doing this to obviously you removed all these running fibres which can be used in other flies, you can keep a hold of them because they, they do really well. I mean, I'll use them in tails, I'll use them in wings. Good in saltwater flies. The organza rib is uh, very good for shrimp patterns, especially this colour. And, uh, see, there you go. That's another two. And that should do it. There's another one there. It's such a fine fibre, you just got to get it right down to the seam. Stay your time. Now, what I'm going to do is cut this into a. To start off, I want it quite short, cut it into a point. And wind this up. So see, this is going to be the gills. The, the, the gills of the stone clinger are very pronounced. You can see them a mile away. So 
from some of the fibers away. So I can now I'm going to tie in the back first on the way down as well. Make sure the shiny side. Yeah, cut into point. This is two mil uh, wide, so I'm just going to cut that into a point. On the way down, just catch this in, just to nice and easy. Catching my ganza rib. I'm going to wind the ganza rib over some dubbing. I'm using a pale olive dubbing. Just make sure this is going to start right at the tail. Let's check where we are, that's fine. Get my, this is a pale yellow dubbing. This is for the thorax and the body. Very light. This is a, a mink type dubbing. There's lots out there you could use. So there is. There's many companies produce their own very similar colours. Nice and light. Just stretch out if you need to. Work your way up. Encouraging the shape of the nymph. And when you see this fly, you'll, you'll recognise it straight away. Now, I'm just going to do a turn at the back. Start just there. Just be careful with your tail. And then, basically, do a turn front. Bring it over. Catch it down. On the top, keeping it on the top, nice and tight with the ribbon. Just do another turn, come over, hold it back. It's the exact same way I do, I tie the, the caddis, the caddis pupa. This time I'm doing a couple of turns, increase the size of the abdomen, the colour, come over. Single turn on that, and then looking for a couple of turns there. At this point, you want to tie off your organza. Make sure it's split either side, nice. That's good. And bring this over. You can tie off a nymph skin now. Trim that away. There we are, you can see the body you get with this. Now what I'm going to do is trim away any of the fibres. Just do a nice split. This tying method you could use in many flies, many nymphs. So you can't, and it'll work for you. The tail's okay, that looks fine. Tidy this area up. Now, I'm going to take my thread right down to the eye. I'm going to tie in a tiny wee bit of a dubbing. Now, the dubbing I'm using is the same now on the body. It's pale yellow. Just a wee drop, not too much. Just to start the head off. I'm going to tie in the legs. The, the legs are dyed yellow brown partridge. Looking for a really nice well marked feather. There we go. Give away the fluff. Just to see the length. And then we tie this in at the tip. And with the underside facing myself up. So just right on the top. So I'm going to bring this over and uh, just trim this, tip out and then get some more of the dubbing and start to build the head up. What I'm going to do is just figure out the dubbing through. I'm going to try and keep it as thin as I can. Now what I'm going to do here is take some of the dubbing onto the actual eyes to help fill this up. You can see what I'm doing here. You can see there, just now figure eight through. Try and keep it as flat as you can. Start to work towards the body. Nice 
use the light. Now, there's lots of things you can do here to check that you're you can always go back if you're not happy with the way things are sitting. Be quite a look. Looks okay. Can bring our, our hack all over. Draw these fibers forward. Now you can again you can exaggerate slightly. You can use rubber legs here if you want rubber legs or whatever. I'm just using the natural which I Wants to be a prefer natural fibre, and what I've got done here, you can see, brought it over the back. I'm going to bring the raffer over at this point just to check, see how things are sitting. And that looks okay. Now, what I like to do is then spread these fibres, flatten them out, so they're coming away fan-like from the body. You can encourage them to stay there. I'm going to use a bit of UV resin. Sit it on the top and let it soak in. You can flatten it slightly. Set the resin with the torch. This will hold the legs out. And obviously protect the hackle. All I'm going to do is trim this away at this point. I'm going to bring over Raffia. Take your time. I'm going to tie off at the back here. So what I might do here is just grab some of these fibers, a couple two or three at the back, bring the thread through, which will hold them. Makes them look better, or it just swims better. That's what I want. Catch it down. This is why it's fiddly. It's like you're just trying to make yourself happy when you're tying these flies. You get them the way you want. Two or three turns. Make sure it's flat. Bring out these hackle fibers. They're all set forward. That's okay, now I'm going to try to tie this off. A bit of super glue on the thread here, so I'm wet finishing and securing in the wet finish. One, two, three. Nice and tight, trim that away. Come in, trim that straight across, but leave a sum. And then we can have a quick look at how the legs are sitting. Here you go. That looks okay. We can trim some of these fibres underneath here. Colour up the top of the, of the raffia. Just using a permanent marker pen and a brown one. Just, just lightly colour these. Make sure you get all the area. Don't want to go underneath. You're at the front. Now you must allow that to dry before you put the resin in. It's fine. If you don't want to use the resin, just put some varnish on it. Just moving the legs about so you can see how they should sit. The resin I'm using is just a light resin, UV resin. You drop a resin on the top and use your dubbing needle to spread it. Right to the eye, right over towards the eye, but not in it obviously. Check. You need this to protect it so you do it. If there's too much you can always take it away, you don't want to lose the shape. Let me see, oh, it's fine. So I can set the resin. I'm going to sort of highlight the 
the eyes, give it a pupil, you can use the same pen, we dot, okay, see how it highlights the eye, there we go, finish it off with a slight coat of varnish, very fine coat of varnish. Shrink a wee bit. And there we go. It's just stone clinging nymph with the organza for the girls.